Hello everyone. Welcome to live story time. My name is Miss Mary and I am um, so happy to be here with you this week to read more stories. And um, when, you f when you arrive, please just say hello in the comments and I'll make sure to give you a shout out. And um, this week we are imagining our story underwater. So um, I have all sorts of fun stories for you today and I'm also going to link to this week's themed activity guide which is all about um, being underwater and um, the ocean and things like that. So lots of great things um, for today. So again, if you have arrived, please say hello in the chat. And my screen is very small today for the first time, so apologies for that. Um, hopefully it's not small on your end. <laughs> hopefully it looks just fine. Okay, I'm just going to wait a little bit to see if others arrive. My screen just got a little bit bigger. Not much bigger, but a little bit. Okay. Okay. Again, welcome to live story time. My name is Miss Mary, and this week we are imagining our story underwater. So let me first link to our themed guide so you can see that. Okay. And without further ado, let's get to our first story of the day. <clears throat> this story is called Big Al by Andrew Clements. And I should mention really quick that I always love asking my fellow librarian friends what books they love. Um, because if it's something that maybe I haven't seen or read, it's always great to hear what they have to say, you know? So this was actually recommended by one of my good friends, Kelly, who is a librarian here at the library. So thanks, Kelly, for recommending Big Al. This is a great one. I hope you enjoy. In the wide blue sea, there was a very friendly fish named Big Al. You could not find a nicer fish. But Big Al was also very, very scary. He does look a little scary, I will admit. Other fish seemed to have at least one friend. Some had many, but Big Al had none. He did not really blame the other fish. How could he expect little fish to trust a great big fish with eyes and skin and teeth like his? So Big Al was lonely and cried big salty tears into the big salty sea. Oh, poor Big Al. I'm sure he's really nice. He's just really big. But Big Al really wanted friends, so he worked at it. First, he tried wrapping himself up with seaweed. He thought it was a great disguise, but no one else did. Who wants to stop and talk to a floating plant that has big shark teeth? Yeah, that disguise isn't really working. <laughs> Then he thought that if he puffed himself up round, the other fish would laugh and see how clever and silly he could be. But all they saw was how big he could be, and they steered clear. Poor Al. Oh, my. Very early morning, very early one morning, Big Al went down to the bottom and flopped and wiggled himself onto the sand until he was almost covered up. 
He looked much smaller. When other fish came near, Big Al talked and joked with them and had a delightful time. But then, one scratchy little grain of sand got stuck in his gills, and he, and he, he sneezed. When the clouds of sand cleared away, all the other fish were gone. I'm sure Big Al probably had a big sneeze, right? <laughs> big Al even changed his color one day so he could look like he belonged to a school of tiny fish passing by. He bubbled along with them for a while, laughing and feeling like he was just one of the crowd. But he was so big and clumsy that when all the tiny fish darted to the left and then quickly back to the right, Big Al just plowed straight ahead. He went bumping and thumping right into the little fish. Before he could even say, oh, excuse me, they were gone. And he was all alone again, sadder than ever. Poor Big Al. Just when Big Al was starting to be sure that he could never have a single friend, something happened. He was floating along sadly, watching some of the smaller fish, and was wishing they would come closer. As he watched, a net dropped down silently from above, and in an instant, they were caught. No. Big Al forgot all about being lonely, and he forgot all about being sad. His eyes bulged out bigger and rounder than ever, and with a mighty flip of his tail, he opened his mouth and charged straight at the net. The net was strong, but Big Al was stronger. He ripped right through it, and all the little fish rushed out through the hole. He saved them. But when Big Al tried to turn around to go out and go out of the hole, he got all tangled up in the net. He was stuck. The net went higher and higher toward the bright surface of the sea and the little fish watched Big Al as he disappeared above them. When the little fish were able to speak again, they all talked about, all they talked about was the huge, wonderful fish that had saved them. How great to be free, but what a shame that the big fellow had been captured. Just then, there was a tremendous crashing splash above them, and the small fish dashed away. Was it the net again? Not at all. It was Big Al. Those fishermen took one look at him and threw him right back into the ocean. This time, maybe being big and scary worked out in Big Al's favor, right? And now there is one huge, puffy, Scary, fierce-looking fish in the sea who has more friends than anyone else. Big Al. All right, that is the story of Big Al by Andrew Clements. Again, thank you so much to my coworker and dear friend Kelly for recommending that book to me. What a great story. Okay, if anyone is here, please say hello in the comments and I'll give you a shout out. And I have, you know what, let's read. I have two books um, that are coming up next that were rec recommended to me by another wonderful librarian friend. Her name is Miss Kerry, and she works here at the library at Patchogue Medford, but she also works at Seva Library. And I am actually going to share a link to one of Miss Carrie's amazing sing-alongs um, that she does with her friend, Mr. Michael. And these are all songs that are about being in the water, water songs. How perfect for this week. So I just shared in the comments the sing-along with Miss Carrie. And the next two books that I'm going to read are, um, were recommendations from her. So let's read Shark in the Park by Nick Sherratt. Now we've been hearing a lot about sharks on the news, 
But I don't know that I've ever thought of a shark in the park. So let's see what happens. Down at the park, a little boy is testing out his brand new toy. He's got a telescope. Timothy Pope. Timothy Pope is looking through his telescope. He looks at the sky. He looks at the ground. He looks left and right. He looks all around. And this is what he sees. <gasps> what a nasty surprise. In his loudest voice, Timothy cries, there's a shark in the park. I don't know. It might not be what Timothy thinks. Nope. <laughs> a shark. Fancy that. It's only a cat. Meow. Timothy Pope, Timothy Pope looks again through his telescope. He looks at the sky. He looks at the ground. He looks left and right. He looks all around. And this is what he sees. What a terrible sight. Timothy yells with all his might. There's a shark in the park. Whew. A shark. Oh, no. It's just a crow. Caw, caw. Did look like a shark fin, though. Timothy Pope, Timothy Pope has one more look through his telescope. He looks at the sky. He looks at the ground. He looks left and right. He looks all around. And this is what he sees. Timothy's not in any doubt. What do you think he's about to shout? There's a shark in the park. A shark? No, it's not. And aren't you glad? And as a matter of fact, it's Timothy's dad. It's time to go home, Timothy. Timothy Pope says, it's safe to say there are no sharks in the park today. The ducks might disagree, though. <laughs> okay, so that was shark in the park. Okay. Again, if you have um, arrived, please feel free to say hello in the chat. And I do have a question for um, everyone today, including people who watch this at a later time. I am going to be continuing doing my live story times in the fall. But I wanted to ask what a better or more convenient time slot would be for people. Um, I was thinking of changing the day, possibly to Wednesday, um, because of the school plan, which is still, I know, not completely set in stone, but um, I was thinking of changing it to Wednesday and thinking of changing it to a different time of day. So I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on when a, a better time for story time will be come fall because I don't know that the 3.30 to 4 o'clock time slot will be the best for our patrons and for those who tune in. So um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And please just let me know. Okay. This is another story recommended by my friend Miss Carrie. This one is very silly. Very, very silly. This is called Barry the Fish with Fingers by Sue Hendra. Now, I have never seen a fish with fingers before. So, let's see what Barry's all about. Sea slug liked to lie on the ocean floor and watch the fish swim by. He did this every day. Just lounging, right? Having a nice lazy day on the ocean floor. He, whoops, skipped a page. Oh, no, I didn't. He saw fat ones, thin ones, some as big as cars, some as small as buttons. Toothy ones, big nosed ones, googly eyed ones, spotty ones, stripy ones. You name it, he'd seen it. In fact, he thought he had seen it all. Until he caught sight of Barry, that is. Okay, here's our fish with fingers. 
How do you do? asked Barry, proudly waving his fish fingers. Wow, a fish with fingers, exclaimed Sea Slug. These new fingers are the answer to every fish's problem, said Barry. <laughs> What's your problem? Barry asked a moody looking fish. There was a long silence. I'm bored, said the fish. We're all bored, said the others. Well, prepare to be unbored. Fingers mean finger puppets. With fingers, I can knit a scarf, count to ten, type a letter, make a paper chain, finger paint, play the piano, have a big morning stretch. Fingers really are a must for tickling. The fish could see why Barry loved his fingers. They could do so many things. I'm going to tickle you. Suddenly, the sea went dark and the water shook. It was at that moment that one of Barry's fingers did something truly amazing. It pointed. Look out! Oh, and all the fish now, they want fingers. Fingers are fun. Fingers for fish. Fish need fingers. Barry's finger saved my life. Thanks to Barry's fast-acting finger, not a single fish got squished by the massive, heavy box that fell into the sea. Everyone cheered for Barry. Hey, Barry, where can we get some of these fingers? <laughs> Look at this. Pirate Jack's tasty fish sticks. Now I really have seen it all, said Sea Slug. And now all of the fish have fingers. So silly. I loved that book. Okay. So um, thank you all for tuning in today. And I hope you're enjoying this story time. And fear not if you missed it this afternoon or if you came in late. The replay video will be available on our Facebook page as soon as I am done with the live. So you can tune in at any time to hear some wonderful underwater stories. And um, without further ado, I am going to share my last story of the day. This one is a little bit more serious. It's about how water is so special to us and to being alive and how important it is to have clean water, not just for us, but for all of the animals to live in too. So this is a beautiful new book in our collection called We Are Water Protectors by Carol Lindstrom. And the illustrations in this story are just gorgeous. So I hope you enjoy. Water is the first medicine, Nokomis told me. See those beautiful illustrations? I'm going to move to the side so you can see more. We stand with our songs and our dreams. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together. To stand for the water, to stand for the land, 
to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. It will not be easy. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. The winged ones, the crawling ones, the four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, and lakes. The earth. We are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down, tracks down my face, tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit, Nokomis told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in for the fight of its life. And that is the end. And that was We Are Water Protectors. Okay, everyone. Ended a little bit early today. So again, I just wanted to make a quick mention of um, a potential change in the live story time time slot for the future. I want to hear from um, all of you what might be a better time slot. Again, I was thinking of changing it to Wednesdays because on the current school plan for our district, um, Wednesday is a day when everyone is home. Um, again, that's not set in stone yet, so I don't want to say for sure that's when I'll be moving it. But I was looking at Wednesdays, and I was looking at a possibly different time slot because during the school year, 3.30 to 4 o'clock, might not be the best time for families and I want to make sure that people are able to tune in so I would love to hear your thoughts on that and otherwise I hope everyone has a great weekend hopefully the sun pops out a little bit and you know enjoy your weekend I hope everyone stayed safe in the storm we had earlier this week and that there wasn't too much damage and um, I will be back next week with some more stories and a new theme. Make sure you check out this week's themed activity guide that I linked to in the comments. And also check out that wonderful sing-along with my good friend, Miss Carrie. She is a great singer, much better than I could ever be. And um, she sings some great underwater songs for you in that video. So, and her good friend, Mr. Michael, plays his guitar and sings along with her. So it's a great video to check out. All right, everyone, have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye.